I call to order the Board of Trustees regular meeting for December 19, 2023, and the time is now 6 p.m. Trustee Johnson, would you please like to give the invocation for us? Sure. Thank you. By your thank you. There was, thank you for this day. Thank you for the wonderful white snow you've given us, and, and thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy to be our own uh, rulers in the country, that we're not being persecuted by a foreign country or other people. Um, I pray that those who defend our freedoms, who are there to rescue us when we need things, and I pray for those firefighters that, that save our lives. Um, deal with all those families as this season and celebration is here, and that uh, would help us remember them, the ones that can't be with their families. Amen. Amen. Please join with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Ms. Varian. Mr. Evans. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Ms. McKee. Here. I move to adopt the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say I'm disappointed once again the agenda was held uh, from not only myself as trustee, but the public until about 24 hours prior to this meeting. I'm looking forward to the new year, that not being the case. Roll call, Ms. Varian. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. I move to adopt the minutes from December 5th, 2023 meeting as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, discussion? Yeah, once again, the minutes are skewed, do not properly reflect the actions or comments of the board. And that is it. Roll call, Ms. Veering. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Okay, we um, can now move over to public comments and please limit your public comments to three minutes per person. Please come up to the podium. State your name and address for the record.
Speed Slide 1372 on the Dale Parkway. So first I'd like to say, Mr. Johnson, you, know, you have uh, done a great job for Adam Township. I know you've gone back to my days on the school board. Um, you've spent pretty much a good portion of your life, whether it was on a zoning board or as a trustee or volunteering on numerous things throughout the community. Hopefully you continue to, you know, present yourself in, in ways to the community going forward that will continue to be beneficial. But you, uh, while we may not always agree on certain things, mm -hmm. you know, there was always respect, and I certainly respect you for, you know, the time you've put in, and for the, the uh, last two years, definitely, you've, uh, you know, you, you definitely earned people's respect. Um, <clears throat> there's no obvious, uh, Nobody obviously doesn't, you know, people realize you know, where I stood on the last election. And I will say that Mr. Burkholder, you know, I, I've known you for over 20 years also, and I remember you when I endorsed you for county commissioner, and I remember Gary Burkholder back then. That's the one I hope shows up on January 1st. You know, that's the Gary Burkholder that will serve the community well. And um, I hope your association with Mr. Evans, you know, is not one a partnership where you just agree to agree on everything, but whether but rather you take you know, opinions from you know, Mr. McGee and you know, opinions from Mr. Uh, Evans into uh, consideration when, if you are board president and uh, take those things in. But like I said, I've known you for a while and I've supported you a lot in the past and, and I'd like to continue to do that after January if that same Gary Burkholder shows up. That's what my hope is. But I do want to bring up something and I'm hoping that Gary Burkholder from the past will not condone a text message I received from Mr. Evans in March of uh, 2023. And in that text message, you know, I'll state, you know, I'll, I'll talk about this one piece here. Of course, if anybody wants to see it, I'll show it to them in the after meeting. Mr. Evans goes on to say, I think they, again, this was in March of this year, I think they uh, would put a puppet in for the uh, administrative position, speaking about Carlisle, that they can control. I bet he's a political whore. She, meaning Mrs. McKee, is dumb enough to do it. It just goes to show Carlisle is only out for him, only him. Have you heard anything else thinking of running? You know, I went on to say that, you know, that, uh, okay, so we know from Bain's situation that she needs, and I'm just talking about Mrs. McKean, this conversation, uh, somebody that will be able to help direct her and coach her on what to do. She has shown that she doesn't care if she is associated with Carlisle. If you are her, he would be the obvious choice for that position and would be the fourth trustee. Mr. Evans fires back and states the Gurgley people probably want the one from, from Genoa. She is being directed by them also. She whores herself out to anyone that will do things for her. So my question, I guess, is will you... Is that you time? Say, I'm sorry? Isn't that time? The time? Ms. McKee, three minutes. Yeah, no, I still got Go ahead, Mr. C. So, again, I would just like to know, you know, today, you say hopefully new things will start in January of 2024. Are you going to publicly apologize today for calling Trustee McGee a whore in a text message to me? Is that the Mark Evans that we're going to see in 2024, or are we going to see a different one? What I will do is post your text messages Absolutely. to me. Absolutely, because the difference between Showing me and a double the agent the the working for Mr. Him, Carlin. The difference between me and him, I'm not the person in office, and I'm not running for office. That's the difference between me and you. I can say whatever I want, and I'll tell people I said it. I have no, I have no problem with that. You're the one sitting there. You're the one that works for the people, not mm -hmm. me. So there's a the difference. You can post all you want. I'll post back. Mm -hmm. One over a hundred messages from you. Yeah, and it's a lot more damaging than that. My guess is, you know, Mrs. Brown, you know, Mrs. Hanson, probably Mrs. McGee. With all of the different things that you have to say about them, I guess there's a pride defamation case somewhere in there. But we'll see. So, again, right. my, my situation is I'm not the elected well, official. Well, again, we, we have your message saying that you were contriving all this oh, to try I've to, to, try to destroy Mr. Burkholder's campaign. I've admitted this to everybody that I played Ms. you McKee. like a fiddle for 10 months. For 10 months, I played you like a fiddle. Thank and you gave me all the information that we needed to know about you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Sly. I appreciate it. And this is the Carlisle side doing this. This is what I've been fighting against. Is there any more public comments tonight? John Kennard, 107.
785 Palmer Road. Um, I also would like to thank Mr. Johnson for all his many years of service and feel sorry for your last year of abuse that you've had to take from the person on your right. Um, I see we got executive council or executive session. Uh, I think when you guys are going to have an executive session, that should start at 5 o'clock. You get all these folks in here, all the township, all the, you know, <coughs> and we have an executive meeting from 6 to 7 or 7 to 8, and then we have the regular meeting go till 10. So I think what you need to look at is having that session before you get the crowd here at the township. What about putting it after? A lot of entities put it at the end. Would that be better so you hear the reports and all that? So if you want to stick around for the executive session. Thank you, Mr. Kennard. Is there any other public comments tonight? comments tonight please my name is Lizette from Meredith and Terminal Trev. I want to thank Jeff for his years of service and to the community and the great job that you did and um, just the little bit of time that I've been here and witnessed what you did. Um, I just want to say that as we kick off the new year and we have new trustees here, that they will do what the people want and not what they want. And that they will really, really represent the people of Aetna and not themselves. Okay, and that includes financial and the whole thing. Okay, stop with the nonsense. We don't need any more nonsense now. You got what you wanted. But Aetna, you got who you voted for. So I hope it all works out. And I hope that the new trustee is going to work for the people. Okay? So let's get the work done for Edna, not for the trustees. Thank you. End of story. Is there any other comments tonight? All righty. are supposed to go in executive session, uh, but right now the legal attorney that's representing the township is not here. So we're going to go ahead and move over to the report from our um, township administrator, Nita Anson. May I go to the podium? Yes, ma'am. Please, thank you. the end of the year, I want to wish each of you and everyone you love an amazing holiday celebration and a healthy, happy, and prosperous new year. My Jewish friends just ended their observance of Hanukkah. My Christian friends will be celebrating the birth of the Messiah. And most of us will enjoy the comfort of gathering with our families. Hopefully, as this year ends, we will all find grace and peace. 
the road crew has already been out twice uh, since our last meeting solving our roadways. Thank you for that great work that you do. Uh, trustees, please consider an annual reimbursement to each road crew member for approved safety boots not to exceed $250 per road crew employee. This reimbursement would be annually each January. For any road crew member employed after January of any year, that employee would be entitled to reimbursement the following January. This expenditure can also be applied to the $500 rebate available through our insurance. So move the $250 per employee. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? I believe we used to do this, but I just got pushed by the wayside. I think, don't you remember that? Is that it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. My question is on new employees, why aren't they reimbursed even though, isn't this about providing the boots for safety? Aren't they steel-toed and I mean pretty for safety? So why, why wouldn't we do that on the new employee? If they start January 5th, it's an entire year that they're not reimbursed. Well, no, uh, they started January 5th. I'm just saying the, the, my intention was so that each of the reimbursements would roll around to January so that it wasn't up to the fiscal officer to determine that, oh, this person was last reimbursed in May, so now we can't reimburse them again until May. So having them all roll around. I mean, I suppose we could amend the motion to say that a new employee would be entitled to reimbursement upon hire and then again in January, but then what if they were hired in November or December? So I thought this was the easiest way to keep track and ensure that each employee had a new pair of work boots every January. If okay. there's a better way to do it, I'm happy to you know, can have that be your determination. Yeah. Yeah. But my concern was tracking who had new boots when and when would they otherwise be entitled to yeah. reimbursement for a second mm -hmm. pair, for mm -hmm. another new pair. And this isn't just a check to them for 250 they have to provide the receipt. It's a reimbursement. Yeah. That's correct. I just think there's a better way to do the new employee, especially maybe if they're hired earlier. I don't know. Great. Because if it is about safety, we want to ensure that they do have the proper boots. That would be my only comment. Roll call. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Copley and I have reviewed the many applications received in response to our ad for a road crew member. From those submissions, Mr. Copley called the most promising candidates and made recommendations to me for interviews. We interviewed four candidates in person. We recommend extending an offer to Nathan Pack. Nathan came highly recommended by Jason Frabel at the City of Pataskala. He's young and will be a good addition for the future of the team. He's currently an independent contractor, so he would not need to give notice to a current employer. And I'm asking for you to approve us to extend, extend an offer to Nathan, contingent on passing the drug test, driver's abstract, and background check subject to the union contract. Is he here? I don't believe so. Um, no, I don't see him. This a, I'll make a motion that we hire Mr. Pack. I'll go ahead and second. Um, he would follow everything out of the union pay. Oh, is, he'd follow the union pay oh, yeah. scale and everything that involved the union. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, when would be his start date, you believe? Well, he could start, if, I mean, as soon as we get confirmation, he, I guess he could start as early as this week, but we would need to get confirmation ultimately of him successfully doing the drug test, the driver's abstract, and the background check. So it's so, to him. But he's available immediately okay. as soon as, you know, okay. as soon as those things happen. Okay. I just would like to say, I don't think it's proper that we don't get to meet him. We don't get to interview him. Uh, this is deviating from past practices and um, it, he should have been brought in on, in executive session so at least we can have that because we do have the oversight and one of the issues that we've had on this board is the board's not being provided uh, proper correct information full information all the time so it's our duty to ensure that is the case so I, I'd move to table this 
so that we can interview him. I did ask that we have an executive session for these instances, and I don't know why that's being ignored. This is completely consistent with the process that we've used since you've hired an administrator. Um, you put me in charge of the, as the supervisor of the road crew, the last road crew members we hired, we followed exactly this process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm, but I'm sorry to interrupt because I know that there was a motion yeah, to table. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh. To die. Is there a second? It's the second. Yeah, I'll second. second. Yes, yes, I'll second. Do you want roll? Yeah. Mr. Please. Evans? Oh. Roll call, please. This, this is the motion to table. to table. Oh, no, no, no. We didn't. That's not what we thought we were. Yeah, yeah. we no, weren't we, talking about You seconded that. the motion to hire. So you said, yeah, I second the motion to hire. Yeah, I don't did. know where the, the table it came he from, from Mr. Evans. No. Mr. Evans made a motion to table, but he um, started talking before you Okay, started. I'm sorry, Ms. I apologize. Hanson. You I are fine. It's before. okay. Yeah, it's okay. So you need a second to table. A motion to second. It sounds like that died to, to table it. So um, we're continuing the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, you, you yeah, said that. I, yeah I, I feel it. Mr. Copley, look through the, how many did you look through the thing, applications? More than 10. And then how many oh, did I, you interview? Yeah, probably. I don't know how many. I mean, and, they, okay. and they all had CDLs. Yeah, the ones I, yeah, the ones I called back on, yeah, they all had CDLs. And I so it was a very competitive yeah. group of people, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so we, had, we had a number of applications that had no CDL. Mm -hmm. And so the ones that had a CDL B or A, those were passed on to Bubba. And then Mr. Hobley, um from there determined based on their um, resumes that they were submitting or their applications, whether to call them. There's probably 10 or more that he called and then narrowed that field down to the four that we interviewed in person. And, and you were on interviews, correct? Sorry. Correct. So we had plenty of resumes come in. We had plenty of CDLs. We narrowed down to that. You called them, got down to four or so. You, you two enter. Your decision is good with me at that point. You guys know when I came about the road crew. You've been, you invested your time and effort into it. All right. Well, I just like to say I'm going to vote no just on the process. Nothing about the individual or anything, but. And they will be reporting to you, uh, that person, so. Um, roll call, Ms. Berry. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Anita, can I ask that you just start next week and not in the middle of a pace? Oh, oh sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes good sense since mm -hmm. Friday's the end of a yeah. pay well, period, so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. The road servicing, resurfacing projects on Palmer Road and Heritage Etna Parkway are complete. Both projects came in under the bid. Of a total $858,446.50, the Jed Z's will reimburse the cost for Heritage and Etna Parkway in a total amount of $463,581.60. And that those checks are expected by year's end. The expense to the township for the total project will ultimately be $394,864.90. Thank you. Mr. Uh, we had our second all-hands team building meeting this week, um, last Friday. Uh, it was very well attended. Um, we had two trustees. We had our uh, fiscal officer elect. We had all of the employees in attendance. And we took an opportunity to share discussions of Mr. Johnson and thank him for his many, many years of service to the township. 16 years as a trustee, but many years outside of that. And then we had a team building exercise with uh, characters from Christmas movies. And um, I don't know if anybody thought that was as fun as I did, but I thought it was really fun. We had a good time. It was a great time. It was good, but I don't think I had the most fun. <laughs> you think I had the most fun? I think that could be true. That's kind of typical for me. Um, I wanted to give an update on the Scannell um, remediation work. There was a question asked at the last meeting about the noise generated at the site from dropping trailers, mm -hmm. and there's nothing in the PMUD that addresses noise. 
so I wanted to cover that. Scannell has provided the county with the timeline for construction of the remedial ditch. The ditch will be constructed beginning January 22nd, and it's projected to take 19 days. It will be then connected to the existing drain tile. Pipe installation will follow with the west connection being completed by February 15th. So that was a schedule that we got today. Uh, Smoke Road is open at Refugee. Yay! 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 There's at least one lane uh, with traffic control lights. So that's open and no longer completely blocked. I wanted to remind everyone to register for the OTA conference, the winter conference, February 7th through 9th. Pre-registration is due prior to Wednesday, January 17th, so there's still time, but I wanted to remind you. I have heard from Mr. Evans and Mr. Burkholder that they have registered. I have registrations for Mrs. McKee, Mr. Copley, and Ms. Petunia. So anyone else that um, would like to have any assistance in that registration process, let me know. Um, from our park committee, we have received about 150 paper responses to the park survey. That, of course, is in addition to those that um, responded electronically through SurveyMonkey. And so on the paper submissions, we are inputting those paper submissions into SurveyMonkey so that all of the um, uh, data can be collected in one, in mm -hmm. one place. Uh, the National Fitness Campaign is looking for communities to award grants for a program called Healthy Communities. They are very excited about the possibility of working with the township to provide its first Central Ohio location. I provided each of you a PDF of a presentation that was made last week and gave you a link to a three-minute video. This presentation is for an outdoor gym area. For the fitness court studio, there is a $30,000 grant available requiring an estimated total from the township of $217,500. America is fa facing a health crisis caused by sedentary lifestyles. This was only exacerbated in recent years by the sheltering and distancing requirements of the pandemic. <coughs> Americans spend more money than any other nation on health care with poor results. We are now in the perfect position to plan for our park to have this type of facility. People can download a functional training system library of fitness programs. We can be part of America's largest public-private wellness partnership. It will encourage our residents to spend more time outdoors, improving both mental and physical well-being. The fitness court studio is about the size of two tennis courts. One side has fixed fitness equipment. The other side is open for fitness classes like Zumba or yoga. The center divider wall is adorned with artwork. I ask for authority that authority be given to proceed with this project with NFC to apply for grants. Have you, have you spoken with David Chavez with NFC? Is that the contact? No. Uh, no. That's not okay, that's the individual I was talking to last year about this, and he gave quite a bit of information. So, if you have you talked to anybody there? Yes, I had an extended meeting, and that's where all of this information came from. Okay, I've got some additional information, but one of the things is uh, you, there's an opportunity with the artwork. They have different ways you can do it, but I think if we incorporate the uh, art, digital art students uh, at Watkins maybe to design that, give them some ownership of, of that. I think that would be a good idea, but uh, this is something, like I said, I brought out last year, uh, so I'm yeah. for this. Well, um, I know to add to the artwork using the high schoolers is a great idea, and um, it's, it is additional for that to happen. Yeah. Um, it's a great idea. So that was one of the conversations that we had with um, the company. Um, is it Megan? Is that was that the ladies? I'm so yeah. sorry. I have to look it up. Um, but I she, have it over at my yeah, head. very very familiar with this. And yes, I do remember you brought it up a year ago, Mr. Evans, way before we got the park even, you know, yeah. to get the committee together. So it was just not a good time at that time. And now that we're moving forward mm -hmm. with the. Um, 
the park, this would be a good time to start implementing this and to come to find out we would be the only one in Central Ohio. And the first. Anyway. Oh, the first, yeah. 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 Well, and so it's exciting for that. Close location of there is in Fairborn, Ohio. They've got yes. one there. So if anybody's out that way, you can take a look at it. It's a great, uh, I think it's going to be a great asset for our community. And uh, so I'm glad it's been delayed, but at least we're moving forward now. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and tonight you're asking for approval to move through the grant to apply for the grant. Is that I correct? I just can have authority to continue to work with them to apply for the grant, but I think we would need to appropriate the money so that when the grant is applied for, we can have the, mm -hmm. the commitment mm -hmm. to say that the township has appropriated the matching funds that will be required. Mm -hmm. So I, I move to go ahead. I'm sorry. I think we're pretty far away from any funds being expended because. We don't even have the center section of the park. That closing has been extended till yeah, at least maybe June. We might be able to do it sooner. Uh, I mean, it's good to get the process moving, but I don't think any, any funds are going to be really expended for quite a while. What? Well, I agree that they probably won't be extended, but when we make the grant application, I assume based on other grants that I've worked with, we're going to have to be able to certify that the township has appropriated the matching funds. Right, and that's we should work with the NCA because so. their funds are coming in and they could maybe we can get reimbursed on that through them. Is this, is this the one you're sending in? Is that it? The no, that's, that's no. me. No, that's, that's you. That's it looks like this. Oh, that's core five. I'm sorry. Yes, I was looking for that. It's a whole, it's, it's this here. This is just a break. But there's a video that you can actually okay, watch. A, I had it attached to yeah. this somehow on the packet, so that's what I was wondering about. It didn't look right. But yeah, this is kind of breaks it. There's and two I, pieces to it. You can go okay. with the... I don't know if you save the stuff. I get last is, I think it's November 22nd meeting at 22. I provided all the information mm -hmm. then to... See more to ask if you're asking for money tonight. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think she's asking for funds. She's asking for the authority to apply for it. Right, but, but you still have to it, assign funds to it, right? Right. This, the funds have to be committed Matching. so that we mm -hmm. can make sure. I was looking on here the price if we don't use their mm -hmm. artwork. Mm -hmm. Well, like I say, even if there's a little bit more cost, I think having the students be involved with that number one would might mm -hmm. motivate them to get into fitness more, mm -hmm. but have, have them have some ownership to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I agree that that would have been a really great thing to inquire about with us at, so that we could have addressed that. And if you had, if you have other information, it would be helpful for you to provide that. I don't yeah, see Yeah, I've got like all the fees. If you want to use like a, the, if you want to use like a national artist, there's a certain fee. Oh, yeah. And, right, right. Cool. That's, all, that's, mm -hmm. that's enough. I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm just saying that we don't even have it. But as far as I, I didn't see it in the budget at all. So I think we have. As far as David Chavez told me, there was no need to expend or commit the funds in the early stage. You, you apply for it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to find for it. Yeah, we can, but you have to commit to um, matching funds to apply for the grant. That's with using their artwork, so you I'm not sure. Okay. I think there's so, extra yeah. if you're mm -hmm. using okay. artwork yeah. that you're choosing. They're going to commit 3000 that's what you're saying. Yeah, it would actually would be with the township matching funds of up to two hundred seventeen thousand five hundred, which is because it includes the cost of pouring the pad. Yes. Or yeah. yeah. They could have a contractor. We could have a contractor yeah. do it. Well, there's a lot of variables. They like to do. They like to use the ones that they're familiar with to make sure you're getting the pad and the padding. And it's going to be um, included. And in the you, design, so that's why there's an additional cost. Um, you, you know, there's a half court, you could do that. Or you could do the full court. Picture a tennis court. So you could do the full, and in one side you could um, do your Zumba and yoga, and the other side it has um, what stretch, different kinds of stretches. And um, the 
art, like he mentioned, you, you have that option of using their art, TIS, or using our local, There's and then or you go with the standard that comes with it if you do the extended, um, which is here on that sheet that she handed out, which is, yeah, the and, full court. And just for the public, I, I reposted what I posted last year on my Facebook page if anybody wants to go to it to see. So I, um, I moved to authorize Nita Hansen, our administrator, to work with the NFC to apply for the grants for the 20, 2024 NFC Healthy City Program with the township matching funds up to $217,500. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion? Roll call, Ms. Varian. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the speed radar signs are active on Pike Street and Columbia Road. About every 45 days, we'll download the data and move the signs to different locations. So be in tune for further reports. Win Waste will be mailing a postcard to the residential accounts, notifying them that the township is giving back tax dollars in the form of payment of the first quarter 2024 recurring charges. Um, that postcard has not yet been mailed, but is um, in the works. Finally, I wanted to seek your advice about closing the garage at 1 p.m. on Friday and the office at 3 p.m giving each employee an extra two hours of holiday pay. Of course, if the snow starts to fall again, then our road <laughs> crew will be out <laughs> in trucks. But um, absent that, that would just give everyone an extra two hours of holiday pay. Hmm. I leave that up to your discretion. I Well, I, I would think, I mean, we provide quite a few holidays, personal days, vacation days. If, I think if somebody wants to take a few hours early, let them do it, but and especially with the union contract, I, I just don't see the need for that. Is there any concern with the union contract that we couldn't close and offer an extra two hours? Okay. And, and that's fine. So I'm you would you would close the office here at one as well as the garage? No, no close the office three. here at three. In the garage at one because they work earlier hours. Okay, so you get, you're trying to be fair, give them all the same amount of hours. That's off, right. A couple that, hours. Two, uh, that just Makes gives sense. everyone an extra yeah. two hours yeah. of holiday pay. I'm off Friday. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I think if people want to take it off, just use vacation. Well, I've been used, trying to use a vacation time because I'm going to lose it. So it's not a day off. Eight hours vacation. Okay, gotcha. So if you approve two hours holiday pay, I need to know how. I'm trying to use a vacation pay. Gotcha. I'm going to lose it by the end of the Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you aware of Laura being off Friday since she's your employee and how are you guys going to work that out? Yeah. Okay. We can work it out. She take two hours on Thursday. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay. I need board authority for that. I just need you guys to make a motion right out just to make sure it's okay for audit wise because there's only so many holiday hours given from the state to pay the staff. So if you want two hours, you can have it. I just need the board to vote. Authorize that to yeah. move forward on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're just closing out the uh, office early. Um, so you motion to, for two additional hours of holiday, holiday pay so mm -hmm. the road crew would have from the Well, the holiday is actually Monday. Correct. The holiday yeah. is actually Monday. Tuesday they come back to work though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you guys don't have Christmas Eve off? Well, it's on a Sunday. No, I mean normally. Yeah, Christmas Eve is normal week. They would normally not have it off either. No, no we never have it off. But in the past, sometimes mm -hmm. you let us sleep early. John, John Carlisle let us sleep early. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, vacation's got to be used up by the end of the year. I mean, why, why isn't that just being used? There are, yeah. but some of the workers don't have any vacation time, so yeah. Yeah. Right. to be fair, it, it, and they don't have any personal time either. Either. Right. Yeah. I just think, I mean, if it was our personal business, yes, but <laughs> we're, we're running this for the 
Yes. Those things. And I make a motion to get two additional hours off for holiday, like gift, pay, whatever you want to call it, for employee. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. We'll call Ms. Bailey. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess we are now going to back over to um, executive session. I move to go in executive session per Ohio Revised Code 121.22G for George to discuss personal matters and litigation matters with counsel and the time is 641. Invited into the executive sessions are the trustee, myself, Rosalind McKee Flax, trustee Johnson and trustee Evans and also attorney Pat Kesson. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call, Ms. Varian? Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. I move to come out of executive session, and the time is 7.20. I'll second. Is there a second? Okay, discussion? Roll call, Ms. Varian? Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. And for the record, three trustees, myself, Rosalyn McKee, Flax, Jeff Johnson, Mark Evans, uh, Trustee Evans and Trustee Johnson, and also legal counsel, Pat Kesson, were in executive session. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you keeping me on track there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move down to new business. Um, I move to authorize myself, Rosalind McKee, to sign the form for DTE 24 tax incentive program application for real, real estate property tax exemptions and remission as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, discussion please. What's that form you had pulled out before? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is this for a previously approved TIF on that property? This is not any this is not a new TIF, correct? No. This is just to put it activate it on the rolls. Yes. Roll call Ms. Mary. Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans. Uh No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. All righty, I'll move over to the Zoning Commission. Um, these are appointments for two different boards. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Johnson. Do you want to take over the Zoning Commission appointments? Uh, yeah. We got several applications yeah, I didn't know. Um, in. So the total of four. Mr. Zach. Yeah, Mr. Zacker and Mr. Albright and Mr. Kelly and Mr. Nicholson were the applicants. Yeah. Well, for the record, this wasn't published. This wasn't posted. So I think we should be putting this out there. You're considering applications from. Uh, people that maybe have just happened to see it in, on the agenda, but this was never released. And this is another reason why putting the agenda out earlier. So, I mean, we, we've got a lot of people in the, the township wanting to apply, but even for those that are uh, being reappointed, I think we should have executive sessions to talk to them, see how it's going, see if they've been a good fit and move forward properly. So I don't understand this just Stuff yeah, have you spoken to any of these gentlemen that you mentioned, Mr. Um, Evans, that had previous been on the boards that you said asked them how it was going? You're talking Mr. Adam, um, Kelly. Kelly, and then also Mr. Eric Nichols. Have you spoken to them at all? Had any conversations with them? Well, yes, but not in the full aspect of the board appointing in this matter. But why aren't, why aren't we being more transparent and putting it out there 
And uh, Mr. Kelly's request was early in, I think, this month, December, maybe November. Why wait to the last minute? Uh, again, this is common practice for this board leadership, but it's not proper. We hear from residents time and time again. You said wait to the last minute for what? I'm sorry, I missed that part. We wait for the last minute. For appointments and don't even advertise them. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't understand when you said we waited until the last minute about Mr. Because Kelly. their term ends the 31st of this year. Sure, but you're saying we waited until the last minute? No. Yes, no. this is yeah. this is our last regular meeting. Yes, for the year. So you're that is absolutely the, correct. It is not literally the last minute, but figuratively the last minute. Okay. So I, I believe that this should be tabled. Again, bring bring them in to discuss There's and advertise. You know what? I, I, I'm going to make a motion that we appoint Adam Kelly, reappoint Alec, Adam Kelly to the Board of Zoning Commission. He's done a fine job there in a short time there. You're in the middle of a motion. So you need a second. I'll second. Yeah, I, I think he's done a good job there in a short time there. He applied back, went back on the board. Well, I, I do too, but again, it's the process. When you have standards, you have processes that you go through and you don't... Uh, Adam's a great guy. He asks questions on the board. He, I, I believe he's an asset on that board. I do too. But again, it's being transparent to the residents and... And that his initial uh, appointment was not posted or advertised. Miss McKee just appointed him. Again, good quality person, but it's the process that is flawed and, and improper. So that's what I'm against. Yes, ma'am, please. For clarification, can you read the term? It's a five year term. Oh, yes. It's a five year measure. term. Mm -hmm. five -year term. January. Yeah. Go ahead. So yeah, it is a five-year term. Mm -hmm. Starting January, right? 2024. 20, 2024 to December 31st, 2026. 28. 28, I'm sorry. Thank you. You said December 20? January 1st, 2024 yeah. to December 31st, 2028. And the only reason I'll be against this is because of the improper procedure. We need to do better. And I think we will soon. Roll call. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. And that was for the Board of Zoning Appeal? No, it's only commission. I'm sorry, commission. commission. Yeah. That's appeal. And that's no, the Zoning Commission. No, I said commission. Oh, commission. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so commission. sorry. Now, for zoning, I'd like to make a motion move to appoint Eric Nichols. To be reappointed to the Board of Zoning uh, the board Appeals Board, yes, the Appeals Board, I'm sorry, with terms starting January 1 of 2024 to December 31st, 2028. Okay, I'll second. And so we can go in discussion, please. Once again, he's, I presume he's done a good job on air, and I see no reason not to reappoint him. Well, I think we should have had an executive session again. There are decisions made by the Zoning Appeals Board, especially uh, when you take into account the numerous variances for the warehouses given. Um, I am concerned a little bit about that. And again, we should have had the executive session. So for that reason uh, and the improper process, I will vote no. Roll call, Ms. Barron. Mr. Evans. No. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKee. Yes. Okay, we'll move over to the adult use of marijuana. I move resolution 2312-1901, is that? Yep. Okay, resolution prohibiting the operating of adult use cannibals operation operators in Etna Township under the Ohio Revised Code 3780.25 as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion? Yes, ma'am, please. So just for purposes of the people who are here, this resolution is only to control commercial operations. 
It doesn't have any impact on any personal use. It's just for the, the commercial operations related with to adult use cannabis. Thank you. Roll call, Ms. Mary. Mr. Evans. Uh, no. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Do you have, you have one of these in the fold of this slide? You don't have to send yeah. that one. I'm going to do it. No, it's trustee. Yeah. Oh, you have to do your part. Okay. That's just put our name. Okay. Just your vote. I see it. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll stick this in. Well, but I'm going to go update that when you guys are talking about this. Oh, well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll move over to O Business, um, uh, which is American a AMH Easement Broils 2 project. Turn the meeting over to Trustee Evans. Why are you turning this over to me? Because you were discussing this with the um, AMH in regards yeah. to the easement over there. Okay. Would you like to come up and present, please? That makes no sense, but all right. Thank you. Well, yeah, you were working with me, remember? Let's go to the park and. Am I going to point that directly at you just a little bit? That's good, right there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good evening, more. My name is Joe Pappas, and I'm representing AMH. I'm here tonight requesting approval of the drainage easement for Orioles Phase 2. I mean, I honestly don't know why she turned over me because I've been kept out of any communications with anything regarding this. Um, I do have my concerns about, again, still the drainage, uh, drainage easement on the park land when we don't even have the center section of our park secured, so we might have even less land. I do see that some wetlands, uh, I'd like to hear from Linda Nicodemus um, re regarding um, the wetlands and, and kind of that area, maybe we could do that. Okay. So, is that okay with the board? Yeah, absolutely, she's here okay, for Linda. that. Ms. Hanson, did you have something that you I want just, to present? I just wanted to say, I don't know if Mr. Evans doesn't receive my emails because information is processed and forwarded along um, and this is a process that we've now been going through for I think the third trustee meeting. Yes. So um, all no. of the available information has been provided. To Send, sending information is different than working together for it and to, to turn it over to me makes no sense when if I haven't ever been wants leading. If you up the phone to speak but to me, fine. I'd be happy to speak to you by phone. I'd be happy to meet with you to discuss any questions that you have. But I just don't think it's fair for you to make some claim that you are that somehow information is being withheld. Oh, I, from you, to get information, I typically case. have to do a records request or sue in the court of claims. So that's what I'm saying. Anyway, let's but anyway, Miss Nicodemus, thank you for coming. Um, you had an opportunity to look at this and the site and the drainage and all that. I did notice on some of the maps there's a wetland or, or, or call out of wetlands around this. Is there? Any concern about putting this water there or with the wetlands being there, is there really not a loss of use if we do allow them to direct water there that we could use for the parkland? So under, there are wetlands, if you go to U.S. Fish and Wildlife um, wetland mapper, you will see wetlands and um, ponds. So wet ponds and blue line streams are all noted on there. So anybody can find that information. We also require when plans are put through that any wetland delineations are done. So sometimes it's on Fish and Wildlife or USGS maps, uh, stream stats is another useful tool that we utilize. Um, but they might not be on there. You know, they, it doesn't mean that there's no wetland. It just means that it wasn't mapped okay. when those maps were done. Um, so we required their engineering to do the environmental and find wetlands or areas that could possibly be a wetland and delineate that, tell us what it is um, when they submit their plans. So on this property, um, there the 
it was in early 2022, the preliminary plans were approved. All of that property that's on those plans were including the park property mm -hmm. was a part of the um, Royals property. So when their engineers and that went through the design for the stormwater, it was approved and signed. This is prior to me. I had to ask Jared Nur, mm -hmm. our county engineer. Um, so the normal flow, you can't change, federal and state law says you can't change the flow of stormwater. If it's the natural flow, it's got to go mm -hmm. in that way. So on that detention basin, um, the pond that's there that's going to be expanded for a detention basin, it's at natural overflow currently comes down along one of the wetlands on what is now your property. Yes. Um, if they were to put that 100 year requirement, which is required, so when it spills over, they're supposed to control that and have a site for it. Um, over where it naturally goes, that stormwater would then go into that wetland and then the stream, which is not what the EPA would like to see. So when they designed the plans, they were required to move it over a bit from that and so it would flow in between those two wetlands, the wet pond and the wetland. So it's still flowing in the same direction, heading toward the same stream. Another requirement that they had to meet was to slow the flow. All right, so currently that pond exists and when it overflows from a hundred year rain event, large amounts of water comes down through that area, which is why you have an ongoing wetland and into the floodplain of that stream. With the design, which it looks, when you see it, it looks wider. The width of that overflow, and then the concrete uh, matting that they're putting in, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. will eventually grow grass. Yes. It's wider, and it's put in to slow that flood water down. So when it's coming into your park from that pond, it's going to come down that hill slower. It's going to go in the channel. The grass is going to absorb. More of it will percolate down. Mm -hmm. The whole point is to help the flooding downstream. Yeah. So that's what um, that was designed for. Mm -hmm. This was all approved to, re, to not allow the, um, I, again, I don't know why this wasn't put in when the property changed hands, then there was an overflow and that that was going to be a part of this or that that property was saved and kept with the Broyles property. I don't know. It wasn't a part of that um, discussion. But um, in the stage that you're in, you're at final construction that is already through the process. That means back in February of 2022, if there was not going to be a approval of this easement, it should have been brought forth then to the county engineers and Blicking County planning. Mm -hmm. The TRC is represented by um, soil and water uh, planning, the engineers, any sewer <coughs> districts, fire districts, mm -hmm. your zoning, um, everyone is represented in that. So there was no, um, no contingency, no, there's no remarks in the records. I looked at everything I could find, so no one had brought up a problem with that 100 year. So you're uh, saying everybody pretty much overlooked it? Yeah, they over, us. But yeah, they, well, they were wait, that would be the ones that would bring it up. So if it wasn't something, what, again, it, they owned the property at that point in time. Right. So the plan was approved even through your zoning. Well, they owned the it, but we had a purchase agreement for that property back in 21. Okay. The prior board instituted, so I think it was in escrow at the time, but I think it was delineated where that property line was going to be. So that was my, I guess I'm just concerned about, are, are we losing land that is usable for the park? And two, now knowing that maybe our township, the, the zoning, did not
catch this earlier, well, along, along with everybody there. else. To inform us. Um, well, the engineer's office, when Jared and county planning said when those preliminary plans came, even if it was in escrow, the plan showed that the property at that time belonged to the people that were developing yeah. Corroyo's farm. So it wouldn't have been brought up at the preliminary mm -hmm. because it, when the plans were submitted for review, it still showed that. But the township would know where that boundary is. Well, yes. It's and just, they would have been the only it was a mistake, maybe, or an exactly. oversight. Okay. It is an oversight um, that you should really take into consideration. Yeah. So that was one of the things that Nina and I talked about with a couple of different developments is that in our help, because we're partners with you, we would let you know that you should really look at easements prior to print the preliminary plan and design it should go to the board your trustees for approval prior to that so that we don't have this issue in I the agree. future you really need to make sure you're aware especially large developments and what those requirements are what we are doing to make sure that we protect Etna Township because that's who our partners are yes is in your operation and maintenance agreement with Broyles mm -hmm. or any other development. We require in Licking County a operation and maintenance agreement, which is why this was brought to the attention the easement needed, and the easement. And this is all will be noted that they have to maintain it, any problems with it. This goes before the county commissioners and they go into an agreement with them for this operation of maintenance and the as-built drawings for the whole design, including this easement where the water's going. And once that agreement is written, it is recorded with the deed. So no matter who owns the property, whether it be a homeowners association or even individual, say the homeowners association dissolves. Right, it goes Those with the property. Those property owners will still have to pay for that county commissioners can hire someone then they can make it all go on to county engineers and then everyone will be assessed the, to maintain that are you, are you talking about putting this on a ditch petition if or? they didn't maintain it if they didn't maintain it if they didn't maintain it so what would be the township's responsibility the township would not gotcha. have responsibility gotcha. to maintain yes. this and that's the there's another development needed that there's a pond going to be built a detention basin all Drayton right. Hall. That's part of Drayton Hall. Drayton, Drayton Hall. Hall. Mm -hmm. And that too, we ask during our, um, our review of the plans that they have an easement, that they add this as their responsibility in that development to maintain it and it get recorded and their agreement with, will be with the county commissioners. Now who pays for the pays into that ditch petition to maintain is it just well, the property owners there or the township wouldn't be responsible for that would it no. or is that outside of your realm it the detention basins and the overflows for those is only if they don't maintain right. mm -hmm. so we haven't had any of those go through um, a process where the commissioners had to we have an obligation with your MPs S permit mm -hmm. to um, inspect those once every five years and what we're inspecting is are they maintaining it and they're supposed to do inspections and maintain it every year we look at those records then we look at it and see if they're not maintaining it we are to take that to you and then to the county commissioners to what to do about it you would have the violation authority to go you're not maintaining this because it's your permit it's not just the county commissioners who permit it's your permit okay. So you would have the authority to to um, tell them to um, maintain it. If they don't do it, the county commissioners will come in and they'll hire someone to okay. maintain it. And then it. I had a question about the uh, access to maintain it. Maybe he, you might be more apt to answer that, but is that going to be through the MH side, not through the park side, right? It'll, it, It'll be through the development side. Okay, that's why I just want to make sure that you're not going to then ask 
for access through because I don't know what we're no, doing. No, we require it to be through their development okay. because we need to check their whole stormwater okay. system. Because I know the plan is just for a little walking path around there, and I wasn't sure if that's you know suitable for maintenance or anything like that. The EPA wanted the, um, according to Jared, the EPA wanted the spillover to be moved a bit mm -hmm. so that that stormwater would come between and not affect those two, the wet pond or the wetland on your property. Yeah. So okay. that they could be right. um, maintained. I think I've got most of my questions answered because I, I was a firm no prior to learning that this process went through everybody and that's really when it should have been brought up at that time. And I, I think it, we have some culpability on the township side that we didn't bring that up and deal with it at that time. Um, so and I Jared appreciate And and county planning stated that if you guys have any um, opposition to any of these designs, if you let them know too, they will make sure to put those comments in prior to it going to the next stages. Okay. Okay. We're not going to approve it without a okay. township's approval. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure that we weren't giving up anything of value just for the sole you know convenience of the developer no, not that, you know you're, you're you're in it for profit in that we, we got to watch our our land and stuff for our residents but i appreciate it federal you. and state law requires that you can't change the natural flow yes. so since the natural flow is on to that property and to the stream it can't be changed it just can be modified to make sure it so you're saying if we hard. we couldn't make them block it and hold it on there because that would be a yeah. change then and that's one thing i okay i appreciate it thank you i don't know if anybody else has any questions or i would just like to point out that the township did not sign off on the preliminary plans that the preliminary plans are signed but they're not signed by the, the township so it, it i don't it, i don't want you to think that somehow something was mishandled by the township. It, I think well, I just, just think back when the, the process the earlier for how plan. it happened that at the time we didn't own the property, the spillway was on their property, yes, and right, so, right. but, so I just want to point that out, that but the township did, did not sign off on the, but the preliminary land. plans, and when it came around to the final plans, then we said, we can't sign off on this because we don't have an easement. Right, but this is where I, I say that more information to the board about this stuff for our review because uh, that could be pointed out but the preliminary plans were reviewed i believe and the they were involved with the park knew the boundaries and th this is the kind of stuff that should be brought up and 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 dealt with early on so we're not doing this because again i was a hard no if it was only for the benefit of the developer uh but with that in, in mind, I, I think I understand. And if we're culpable, we're culpable. And I don't think they should pay the price because of any of that. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing out that I'm not sure the word culpable is the correct description of the township's involvement in this. Well, That's all. We, we were aware of the boundaries. Point. We were The property was in escrow. The boundaries were already set. The That was by the prior board in 21. <coughs> uh, and anything that was done after that was with Ms. McKee's knowledge. Um, so I, I think, you know, we are at some point if we didn't didn't realize that. Because there should be some coordination with the zoning and, and park committee and, and all that. And that's why we need to share information so we can handle these kind of things. But thank you. Any more discussions, I, I had questions about, yeah, about the whole thing. Uh, no, basically for this gentleman here. So, so I guess I've seen there's the current way that the pond is drained through an overflow piece of pipe, right? Correct. Right. There, and then it has its own little overflow area in case that, that pipe can't handle it goes over this other side, right? And then there's this plan, and then I've even seen a third plan. So, you know, I hear this is nicknamous say that it should go to the same place it was going. The new plan shows it going to a different place, and the third plan shows it even worse. So, I guess which plan are you guys looking at? So, can you tell me which one it is? Is it does it does it have a 12-inch tile all the way to the creek? Is that the current plan? 
or is there a 15 inch tile to that would be on the right hand side of the proposed area and then you guys can answer that for me because I've seen too many different versions of it I've walked that part I spent over an hour walking around back here to figure out flows and different things and so I know exactly what we're looking at all right yeah. um, Eli okay. Allen, all right. uh, the engineer on the project uh -huh. um, so the current plan um, is for the pond to outlet through a 15 inch pipe uh, not quite all the way down to the stream but uh, within the easement that's been portrayed. Uh, Which is like 100 some feet, correct? Uh, as far as the pipeline? As far as or from the creek. From it's going to let out 100 some foot from the creek, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And it's letting out as you're looking up the hill where you guys want to put the thing. It's on the left hand side of that, correct? Yeah. That is the like, latest one I've seen yet. Yes. That was not the one that was approved initially back in the first part of 2022, was it? Uh, that I have all the signatures of? The plan that was approved with preliminary plan showed. Have it here. Showed a 12 inch pipe. All right. um, Coming down the left or the right hand side, correct? Similar, similar area that we have it um, just extended further. All the way to the creek, correct? Yeah, through the wetland and. Um, and the pipe's on the other side. Yeah, it's on the right hand side of the, of the thing. Is the pipe buried or is it exposed? Uh, the pipe will be buried. Uh, just it's a typical riser into the pond. Right. Be, overflows into I just didn't know once it got wall. away if it was above oh, grade or below. It should be buried all the way, which would be a, a ditch type of thing, basically. Um, that goes through all things. So, so we're looking at the, the, the third way that it is, not the current way, <clears> not <throat> the way it was approved, but this third way, correct? Right. Okay, so what happens when the water flows out of that 15 inch pipe? Where does it go? So this is any time we get any kind of water into the pond, it's going to overflow into that pipe, correct? Correct. And so, where does all that water go down? Uh, when it rains, basin fills up and there's an outlet structure associated with that basin that treats the water for quantity and quality uh, and releases through that pipe mm -hmm. uh, at a much slower rate than the existing flows would be um, today. Um, and that's just through uh, Lincoln County's um, standards. Um, we're held to a critical storm, critical storm, which it means that we need to hold back, um, in this case, the 25 year storm event back to the one year existing storm event. Mm -hmm. So it's drastically reduced um, flow rates. We're holding all that water back into the basin. It's releasing much slower. Um, and then once it comes out of that pipe, we have um, rock channel protection there uh, to help dissipate the flows even more, um, to help protect erosion. Down well, the you're talking about the, I, I, there's there's pond flow. Yep. To me, and that's pond flow is flow that goes into the pipe once it gets full. Yep, right. And then there's overflow or storm or once a year, whatever you want to call it, secondary. And the secondary is what's come down through those so I, I, I got a picture of them. So the pond, pond is designed um, to, to handle the 100 year storm event through that pipe and outlet structure. Um, the spillway is only for anything above a 100 year storm event would that spillway be engaged, uh, you know, which is not as often as you know, right. rain, storm, yeah. or uh, so anything along those that, lines. And so you're saying. In this case, the spillway is basically an emergency spillway. Right. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Um, so I, then I, the, the problem I have more is with the pipe then. Not you guys are talking about the cements in it, but I, this, this pipe just lets out the overflows of water, which you have all kinds of storm sewers from all this runoff, right, into that pond. So when it rains, all that water from the streets going to come to that pond. It's going to fill up that pond at some point, and it's going to flood out over into the pipe that goes out, which is a 15-inch pipe. And it's going to dump right out in the middle of the, of the yard or the wetlands or whatever. It doesn't dump directly into the creek. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. It's following the natural direction of the existing conditions, headed down. Everything's flowing down to that stream. Um, okay. And just for um, example, the 100 year flow rate that we are allowed to re release from this basin from Lincoln County standards from the stormwater design manual. Um, I believe it's 40 CFS, and we will be releasing only seven CFS. Um, 
and I have it over there. Um, the existing conditions is, is much more than 40 CFS. Okay. Well, so you're still going to dump a whole bunch of water out there. Basically, anything that's up in the street is going to dump out into that swamp area, not into the stream, correct? I mean, not immediately out of the pipe into the stream. So why would, currently there is a drain pipe in that pond, correct? Um, I believe so. Yeah, and it, it, and it comes out right there where that finger comes up, where that low spot, the flood zone comes up to the pond. And it's quite the drop off the side of the pond there. So there's already established flow of water into that spot right there. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so why would we put it back in there? Uh, following the preliminary plan that was approved, um, the, the initial intent and design was to release um, <coughs> uh, in a way that we're not disturbing uh, wetlands and streams and uh, with grading um, activities and uh, the so the wetland in that area it's all one wetland from where the outlet is now um, but there's it's all connected bed. but where the outlet is now there is a creek bed there there's a, it's a dry creek bed at this point as long as the water's coming out it becomes a dry creek bed and that, that's what there is currently so right now. What we're, we're, we're proposing to outlet, it's still recharging that wetland in the area and the groundwater aquifer is Recharging it as, as flooding it? The wetland gets flooding it. What because would there's water no, to be a wetland? Because I, I expected to walk back there. It's all connected to underground. Well, no, but you're letting it out on the ground, not into a stream. You're letting it out into a wetland, not a stream, correct? They're one and the same. In there. Well, this, they're not. The stream is a, is a trench in the ground where water flows through it. Linda might be yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not an environmentalist. I, know, yeah, I, I just don't understand that. <laughs> of why they're moving it. You're very Yeah, why they're moving it. It's already established. It's already established. All right, everything. so with stormwater, for yeah. one, with stormwater, they're required to hold more water. Mm. I understand. Okay, the so there. there's an orifice in their, in their um, head wall. So the outlet structure has an orifice for that pipe an orifice mm -hmm. is a plate that restricts mm -hmm. oh, I, amount of I water so that stuff. yeah i know because we've talked about right. that so that the pollutants won't get into mm -hmm. the rivers and streams mm -hmm. so that everything in that detention basin retention pond will stay in the retention pond coming down where it's at any floatables are at top <coughs> and that release rate mm -hmm. and what they've designed will be slower where you've got the pond at currently, it's already an existing pond, the outlet structure is just a straight pipe. So the right. pond is going to keep as much water as it that overflow pipe will allow. As where detention, that's going to be closed off. All right? So that will no longer, when this is constructed, you're looking at the plans, it's closed off. It's to protect that wetland and from, there's like a little wetland. You can't see it on these plans because it's on your property. But oh, well, you can not see it I actually know. right here. I know exactly where it is. It's right next to it. Look, I got this plane right, right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I know exactly. And, and that thing is right there. And there's a creek bed right there that flows over here. Right, but that'll be closed off. And here's uh, the creek here, right? And they're, they want, and your plan doesn't show, but. That was <laughs> <all>. <laughs> right here, it will be the. Yeah, so yeah, they want to take, overflow. right, there's the overflow, and here's their pipe from there, clear to the creek, on this plan. Their proposed plan is to ride it from here and just dump it right there. And to stop here, because that's too close to the wetland. That, okay, well, this here is too, yeah, I saw the state, straight the straight. Yeah. We won't allow that. There's no stream. Water quality and is important to us. Yeah. Right. Okay, I so see. soil and water is different than so you a lot of to other things. To kind of filter a little bit even before it reaches before the stream. Before it ever hits that stream. So you, Once it hits the stream. So you don't want a, a pipe extended to the stream. No. Okay, so, so that's why they can't do it. You're we saying why can't you just connect it to the stream? We don't want it to, to go the creek. straight in the stream. We want and they're saying they can't because plus, they need it to filter. Plus then we can monitor it better. We can make sure by testing it that there's no pollutants okay. getting into okay. the stream. Well, we need water quality. What, what I'm going to say to this is that that's fine, but 
there's ground there that is a little swampy, but it's, it's firm. I mean, it was firm when I was down there, and there was no stream beds or anything in that area. So the water's going to tend to go the path of least resistance, and it's all going to go that direction. I'm pretty soon you're going to end up with a stream bed there. As much water's going to flow out of that pond, believe me, I know about water flowing out of ponds. Exactly. You, you know exactly where I live. And That's you know exactly what, where it's going to go. It's yep. going to go to that stream. It's going to go right but to putting it. this channel in with the um, matting that they put in for the overflow. I'm not for one, I know. I, just let me. Okay. Just one moment. That's to help water percolate and stay as slow as it can to lessen the impact of a hundred year rain event. Right. So this developing and changing this is already going to help flood. One in creating that. The storm pipe having the water quality device on their outfall, which slows the water down and is meant to hold the pollutant in their pond mm -hmm. and not into yours. Not onto your land and not into our rivers and streams. So um, when that pipe that they have, if it went straight out to the river, then we wouldn't be able to see if there was any problems. So say we do do our stormwater inspection post-development, and we see something on those rocks that they have there, either a slime or a sludge. We can call them, they have to clear that out, they have to figure out what's going on, and fix it. If you have it straight to the stream, it could be multiple. For one, it could be diluted by the water and streams that are in the water that's flowing there, and someone could claim that it was another source downstream. Mm -hmm. Not having it going straight into the stream will help us identify, help Bubba and your parks mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. see that there's something not right. Easier. Yeah. But again, right. this is your choice, but it, this has already went through, and Nita was right, the preliminary plans were signed by the engineers, the county planning, mm -hmm. But that's after a technical mm -hmm. review committee right. that had everybody the TRC in there. Looked um, at. Now it's at final mm -hmm. construction phase, which has already went through all its process, through the EPA, with the wetland, everything. Mm -hmm. And because we were looking at the operation and maintenance plan um, to be finalized, then we're like, where's the easement document? For this Is that how finally got discovered? That I wondered how finally so got when, when, when John was like, I can't sign for an easement. It has to go before the board. I'm like, it hasn't went to the board. It hasn't went to the board. Um, you guys have to verify that and handle those things. But to Jared Nur and County Planning and Lincoln County Soil and Water, the EPA, um, MPDS, and NOI has already been approved on this project. Um, to the best of its ability, it it meets all of the standards. Mm -hmm. And moving it to where it was, was one of EPA's and our concerns. So you said it moved several different times to where it's at now. Well, the drawing The preliminary plan, I wasn't here at that point. I started yeah. in September. The preliminary plans are there. It's like, man, that's right into that wetland. And I am very passionate. Yeah about mm -hmm. wetlands and water. Mm -hmm. You haven't yes, figured that is. out yet. Is. That's yes, who I am. Is. <laughs> and protecting your park and your property, mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent mm -hmm. of. I don't, I won't uh, ever let you guys have to deal with that as long as I'm here. I'll make sure that you understand. We have worked really well together since we actually have a team now. We had one urban tech before trying to do all the plan reviews and all the inspections. Mm -hmm. Now we have a team. Yeah. So we can better service you. Yeah. And I think the main point is we can't stop that flow having to build it. We, Thank you. There's been a flow, so to mitigate it. Well, this, this is a new flow. This is a whole new flow area there. Proposing this goes into us. Well, they're moving the one pipe to this area. They're right? moving the whole thing. Right, but they're moving flow. Yeah, they're moving the whole flow. Right. And so we're going to have flow. That they're not moving, but they really are moving it quite a bit. They're, it that, is moving. Yeah. You are right. It's right. moving, but it's moving to be away from the two wetlands to not adversely affect to in any way. It. If it does break down, it is our plan is. Please move this over so it doesn't harm these two public 
waterways now because they're yours, so they belong to your public. So we don't want the, the wetland or the wet pond on your property affected. If you put it in the middle and you don't run it to the stream, mm -hmm. it could be monitored better. So. Still Ultimately, we're trying to protect the existing water features and waterways as much as possible. And as far as the maintenance plan and all those requirements, are they within this easement? With the the easement will be a part is a part of that. Document. To but is it enough to protect to ensure that it's at the highest level to ensure that there's uh, enforcement mechanisms and and that? Yeah, it went through a process um, through the prosecutor's office to ensure that. The rights of the township were protected, and I, unless I'm mistaken, I'd have to look. I believe it specifically references um, the, the operation. Oh, oh, operation and maintenance. maintenance. You need that yeah. in your easement. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah. make sure it's it referenced that mm -hmm. they have to maintain it. Right. Um, and if this is all going to, like I said, the county commissioners um, and be reported. But not until after it's complete. We've already reviewed the operation and maintenance manual mm -hmm. that they have. But we don't go through the process till after it's constructed and we make sure we have the ad built drawings and that it still matches before final approval. So okay. if something isn't in there that needs to be or something mm -hmm. ends up changing in this process, mm -hmm. we catch it on okay. that end. I just want to make sure there's enough enforcement. Yeah. So on page, at the top of page two of the easement, it specifically references grantee is responsible for all costs associated with maintaining the improvement, including all requirements of the operation and maintenance manual, mm -hmm. Royals Farm, phase two, Licking County, Ohio. That's, That's uh, in paragraph two. So we'll just have to ensure the, the maintenance manual two. is sufficient. I'm sorry. It is no. currently sufficient for what they've designed. Okay. So what they've designed, Joe Jarvis in our office has already reviewed it, um, and it, it meets the criteria that the EPA has. The okay. standard I just want to make sure because I know it's different, but like the Refugee Road project with the lift station, it's been 80 days for quite a while. There's no typically there's some enforcement stuff that you could put in contracts, and that's where I think we got to ensure that it's not just the minimum standard that there is. You have a right to, you know, a duty to maintain it, but what are the consequences if you don't? What's the timelines if you don't? Can they drag it on for a year? Can they drag it? Will that be in the the maintenance manuals? And that about how the maintenance is of, of is. how like date timelines if there is an issue that within sixty days, ninety days, so it isn't going. It, it has to be in there. Okay. okay. They have to plus the EPA requires those operation and maintenance agreements where we find. Even if there's properties that we do not have operation maintenance manuals for, it wasn't until the 2018 stormwater permit that required operation and maintenance manuals because of problems. Problems like before, okay. But they're still required to maintain them. So we have enforcement measurements that we're going to these places where they have stormwater, notifying them they have stormwater notifying them of what they need to do to maintain okay. it and whose responsibilities they are. And if they don't bring it up to standard, then the county enforcement officer will okay. write them up. So this outlet of the <coughs> drain pipe, not the drain field, the drain pipe, not the foot, is it has a big head on it, right? Has the a, outlet is it, big, but the orifice on the inside is, it's like a plate. Well, no, like, I, I, I've seen them, I know okay. that. But I'm just saying the, the out, so now I've got this big concrete structure in the middle of, of the wetlands area, correct? Not in the middle of the wetland, it's in between the wetlands. It's in your park, yes, but it's not in the wetland. Where is it at? Because that's all wetland right down there. It's, do you still have your plan right there? Yeah, I think it's between the wetlands. There, there's it's delineated all wetlands, wetlands the of certain wetland. sizes, but no, it's not in a wetland. And that's well, they can't farm it because it's so mushy back there. You can see where the big trenches where the tractors sunk. Did on. the park consultant do any the, 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 the site surveys of where everything is? It stops right here, right? 
So I sent you the drawing that had been made by the parking. It's all the way down through here. Indicating the flood. where all wetlands were. That's, in that. that's flooded. Is that included in that? Uh, well, the flood zone? Which one's the flood the, zone? The wetland surface. What color are already available. But she was saying not all wetlands are necessarily indicated. That's where you have to do a wetland survey, correct? A delineation. A delineation of wetlands because you can't just go by wetlands. wetlands and the blue is so that wasn't enough. I haven't seen that now. Right. Because this is where I see it. it's this mess right over here, and we're dumping the water right into it, pretty much. Uh, it is a wet area. The whole area in between that—that's where the stormwater normally goes. Oh. So even though <coughs> it is marshy and, and, and see, wet a lot, it doesn't mean that here. it's the actual what has yeah, been determined to be the wet land here. itself. Here. So it's protected. So but areas surrounding wetlands, we require 25 foot buffer which is for the that reason. So those buffers that will be around those wetlands, this needed to be, this outlet needed to be 25 foot away from those and it should be 25 to 50 foot away from a stream. So that's why we couldn't put, we didn't want the pipe to be there. If you look at regulations, um, a lot of people, if say a long time ago, stormwater was managed through the county, through the county engineer's office. Mm -hmm. Engineers are all about water quali quantity, right? They're not about water oh, quality. Oh, yeah. This got moved to soil and water because soil and water is all about water quality, not just quantity, but the quality of water, our rivers and our streams and our environment. So the county commissioners felt that this was a better fit to help our environment, to help our community, is for soil and water to take ownership and management of the county's form water permit. At any point in time, this is your permit also. But as trustees, you can have your own permit. You're required to have a permit. You can either be on our permit and share um, in that, or you can have your own permit. North Township has their own. He, Tascala, they all have their own permit. You still have to meet the same requirements. But ours is, with it being related to soil and water, it's going to meet a higher standard than what it has to meet. Go to Heath. Go to Patascala and see what's going into the rivers and streams from their stormwater. Because they're only dealing with quantity. They're not dealing with quality. And that's sad. But so has this been approved by the county? Uh, we're waiting signatures based on uh, You have to have an easement. We cannot sign on the anything easement. until the trustees but, but decide whether it, there's an easement. You moved it from this plan that was approved for the county, correct? That was, a preliminary, that was a right. preliminary plan. So once they do a preliminary plan, they have to meet certain criteria. By the time they come to us with the construction standards, they have to meet a larger criteria. They have to have their calculations for how that stormwater is going to be held, how long it's going to be, so, um, which so is a huge stormwater report. So they haven't um, approved this one, what you're saying. No, so everybody's looked at it and everybody's agreed that it meets the criteria. The only thing we're waiting on is whether you're easement. going to approve an easement or not. If you do not if you do not grant an easement, then these plans are dead in the yeah, water and we'll have to go back through yeah. county planning and resubmit new plans and find a way to redesign mm -hmm. it. It's still the water is still going to make its way into that stream and that overflow. But this time, if they come in and say they get rid of two, uh, I'm just thinking about the plans that you have in your hands. So they this, have like this two is the lots. Yeah. 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 Let, me, okay. let me explain this. Yeah. We really so need to right here is the protection. current overflow, right? right. This mm -hmm. is where the water's going. Right. So if they do this mm -hmm. over here, right. where it's at, right. okay, then Say they even get rid of this lot here. It's still going to go here, right. but now it's going to go into the wetland. This is a designated wetland. So this little area right there that's an existing pond has been determined by Fish and Wildlife and by the EPA as a wetland. So you're, that's where that water 
is going to go. That's not really where we would like it to go, which is why we would rather it move over to go in between and, and this the is two. Not, and this is not a wetland? No, that's a floodplain. This is floodplain right here. So Have you not said that the green plain? Was, was wetland? Green. No, the green. wetlands are over here, the ponds. That's a I think that's shown the 100 year floodplain. No, this is the 100 year wetlands. floodplain with the dots. Yeah. This was a flood plain. Make sure yeah, this one. The green is the one that well on the shovel all the way through So this is the whole stream is in the wilderness. But it also has a flood plain flood plain associated with it. Which plans was this one from? This your newer plan? What did you say? I, I, it, it's from the construction plans that are, are so awaiting so approval. So I just added color to it so we so could see it. So you could show so it could better. Point and mm -hmm. and show. The outfall and outlet. Mm -hmm and stream is already going into these, the wetland of the stream. Right. Having the buffer area, which the red shows red the 25 foot buffer, yeah. this is even further back from that and the outlet structure is out of that. So they're not, even the natural flow is going that way mm -hmm. anyways. You can't change the natural flow. As this is taking it so it's, yes, it's still, it's even big, if it came here, up. It's up here into a wetland that comes closer, which is the outlet channel. This is going in this between. Then. So it's coming in yes, going this to way. try to protect these areas. So wouldn't it come down through here and just go this way too? That's where it would go. Or if, if you it flood an area, it'd all flood this way and go up in this way, right? If it's coming okay, in here, then it's going to flow this way and go right into this. Right. But look, you this see the red line here? Yeah. So if this is a delineated wetland, mm -hmm. And this is the natural way it's flowing. Right, if they put their right natural 100-year floodplain mm -hmm. right here, it's going directly into it. It's not even having time to percolate in to possibly absorb. Right. It's just that's, going to that's, run it's back up because I'm not talking about this as much as I'm talking about this problem. And it's stopping right here, which is well away right. from the. And that's what floodplain. I have a problem with. And I'll tell you why. Anytime you run water in the same spot every time, you're going to get a trench in. And now have to right? It. Yes. But it's good. It's it's going to find its way over here. Here, trench. This here is stone. Uh, so now you're going to put a amount of river uh, to dissipate the velocity coming out of there and minimize. So now we're going to hold, put a whole. So now you want a whole stone now, area there but too. Over to uh, up to the. Buffer. It's still in a better place. Is my that was our. Argument for one, the to keeping that 25 foot buffer away from a wetland well, the, the and away I'm from the stream, it, it it's our goal. We can't we can't force we can't force them <coughs> to change the direction of the water. The direction of the water overflows to that stream. So either it's going to overflow right into the the wet pond and the wetland where it's going to buffer out and slowly, hopefully, percolate any pollutants onto that easement and not into the stream. Um, that was the best option that anyone in Lincoln County Planning could come up with to help water quality. It was the only I don't know. I just, best I've option. I've lived it for a number of years, a lot of years I've lived it. Yeah. And I'm telling you that is going to create a path right through there. That particular area of our park, it's on a big hill up to the pond, it's a beautiful low area, and now we're going to have this in the middle of it, we're going to have a pipe coming down with a big cement header there with oh, all this rip wrap around there. Uh, 15 I, minutes. I just, 15 I, I just think it ruins what is a very beautiful part of the park when there's other ways to go in and I don't, I think you're going up with a, with a with, with a trench through here anyways. Because that's just the way water works. We have that much. And, and I understand that the part, the drain part, how it works. And I, that's good design. Pond goes down slowly until it hits a lower level and it's got plenty of time to fill up. I understand that, but some of the rings we've had, it's going to fill up and there's going to be a lot of water come out of the pipe <laughs> eventually. But, so, thanks. I, I, this I like is absolutely it. your decision. Yes, no, I, I, I mean, it's right. not, what, we can do our due diligence on the, the best management I and the but best I appreciate practices. your, your and insight on it. I understand. I, but I, what I'm trying to say is, you're, you're the vote. Right. You're the representative of the people and, and your party.
part. I mean, you can even, you could possibly ask them to put a feature around it that maybe not yeah. so big pipe facing yeah. there. Um, uh, you know, but that really should have been done already before we yeah. got there. But we're at an easement document. We've got an engineer and a designer right, right. here. Yeah. And you could put some features around to that way hopefully not make it look so awkward if that should There's already established flow over here anyways from prior pond mm -hmm. outlet there anyways. So why why not use what's already around here instead of recreating a new one and it just in case keeps swinging it into the parking park. Well, she was saying because you want to filter that you don't want a direct injection because right now the water that's coming out is just from the farm. Now you're going to have, so that she wants any of the pollutants, anything so that will retain in that, and it's a way to do that. But it, my question on that 15 inch pipe with the riprap and that, are there any other like uh, tile mats, or do you need riprap, or is there anything that could be aesthetically more pleasing? Um, to his question, we could we could use the tight concrete matting, uh, same as the spillway, to you know, help. Uh, minimize the velocity out of there. Um, it's just an extra, um, an extra way to protect <laughs> and to uh, minimize. I would think you need more. more. Can I get you a look at this? Yeah. Is this what you're proposing? Uh, yes. That's in the. Yeah, I've seen that. That's what it looks like when installed, but yeah. grass does grow through yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the grass and eventually on. grows over. You don't even notice. And it. <laughs> Once it's established, wet one. You, you want to, yeah. you'll have grass. And through. the maintenance of it, is it going to be mowed or is it going to be, because I've seen some yeah, on, I mean, on a specific uh, supplier of the Tide Flex, they advertise that commercial mowers can go right over top of it, no problem. Um, and that's, but as far as now performance, can you let it grow? Yeah. You can let it grow. Yeah. 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 If you guys want to know what that looks like, we have that rock matting at our office. It's on 664 so down there. Well, south. Got it down 256. Down. You can plant additional okay. plantings. Well, I know That's we my picture. Put it yeah, in just, so that we can show people you know, what the best management practice is. I just want to know the discharge of the 15 um, inch if there was something that he's concerned about the aesthetics. But I don't know if that. Um, Ripper would kind of slow and stuff down. Tillers on Ripper, it in the summertime that farmers can um, get and borrow. Not really. We can. So kind of it's all grassy. It's on the. Uh, you don't even know it. So you no, still know it. Just like, reinforced. Yeah. But you can come and look at it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that it and having the grass filter any mm -hmm. anything that's so over once it overflows that's well, that's the biggest thing, you know because if there's pollutants that are floating on the top so the outfall structures down in that's only releasing the cleaner water. When it, a rain event happens everywhere, if it's, a, if it's a rain event and it's flooding your streets, all the dirt and grime from your streets are going straight into the river. So having them put a mat or a grassy area, um, the grass will filter it. And it will also cool it down. So it slows it down and it cools it down. But one of my biggest peeves is filling in a median on a, on a roadway and putting pipe in it. And you see it done mm -hmm. all the time for an extra lane of traffic. So you're sending the water dirtier, hotter, and faster to a stream just to kill your fish and your wildlife. And they do it all, they're doing it right now in New Albany to widen 161 for new development. And it's the saddest thing, um, what we're doing to our environment. So I, I am happy that you're concerned about it. Yeah. I, I think that that's important. I think people need to care about what's happening on their property, mm -hmm. on the rivers and streams. If we don't, who is? Yeah. Well, what's the pleasure of the board? I mean, I, I make a motion to approve the easement. As presented. Okay. I'll second. Discussion. We need to do it. Or is this as presented with which plane? This plane right here, the final one they got last one. Is is the, the actual easement. And it delineates in here, it's got a map. Mm -hmm. Again, I think a lot of this should have been caught at the, the TRC, and maybe we should make a note on that. Um, so 
So they're giving the pipe as part of the, okay, that's what they're doing, okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, with having that maintenance manual, I think I'm more comfortable with it too. Did you actually go out and walk that part? I did not get a okay. chance to, when I did, the asphalt machines were blocked in there. I didn't think they wanted yeah. me to drive through the, I would think, great ruts. Do you have any more information? Please say so if you want to share. Would you like this back? Because I know we work with it. Right. I think if there was an opportunity, if we could have them stop all water, maybe it's yeah. different, but if we can't, we got a lot of sounds. I'd rather direct it where it's filtered, where it protects the stream, where it can. Hey, maybe there's a suggestion for mud volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that as a suggestion on our survey yet. So. You, you know, I know in the past the board the you know, <laughs> has granted easements that has, sure you know, like to AP, for instance, there was a cost, of, you know, there was a cost associated with the easement itself. Mm -hmm. There was a cash payment and an in-kind mm -hmm. um, payment made for the easement. Mm -hmm. that, that's just how the, the board has handled it in the past. Yeah. I mean, sorry. I mean, you could, did you hear what she was? Did you hear what she was saying, Mrs. About Sandy? cash payment and that. Yeah, about the. Um, I'm just saying, in the past, past. when AEP was granted an easement um, on the park property, that the board um, there was a, a cash payment in exchange for that easement and an in kind um, payment with the service as well. The, yeah. With the box. Was there any discussion about that? It was brought up last time. I don't know if you had any. Discussion. <coughs> There's not been any discussion from the developer. There's not been any suggestion from the developer to make any kind of a cash payment. How big was the easement for AEP? Because this is like 0.65. Yeah. It's a little smaller than it's AEP, but AEP also gave us access. The, I think Very the smaller. AEP um, easement was 0.84 acres. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, I believe, is 0.183 acres. Well, again, I think if we handle this properly from the beginning, maybe we can kind of talk about that. But at this stage, and they did sell us the parkland. I mean, we did pay for it. Um, we did pay for it, yes. It was not a donation. Correct. Which was something that was said. And then the um, pump station was something between Southwest Licking Water, not for Aetna Township. Well, I think it benefits us slightly that it's filtered water. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's protecting our property. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, Linda? It's protecting that wetland. The wetland is our property. property. Yeah. Um, and having it back and not directly into it. Yeah. So. That was the best we could do. Thank you. Thank you much. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? No. Ms. McKee? Yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and move over to the Pike Street Intergovernment Agreement, which is the, called the IGA. <coughs> Excuse me. I move to approve the amendment of the Pike Street Intergovernment Agreement 2020-01 between Etna Township and the Licking County Transportation Improvement District dated December 2023 as presented. Is there a second? No second. Okay, discussion please. Uh, the only thing, again, I'm concerned that we had to modify this because that 550 foot section wasn't included. These are the kind of things that we need to ensure that we do properly uh, so we don't get to this point because we could have included this with the Morpsey grant request and uh, that possibly true. cost the 600000 That's not true. So. Um, you don't always have to say something that's not true. This is this is very much the truth. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Okay, we go ahead and move over to our 2024 draft budget. Successful. 
I move resolution 23-12-19-02 to adopt permanent appropriation for fiscal year 2024 as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I want to go into discussion. Um, there were some things that I wanted to ask about on there. Um, there was a couple things under the five year that was missing. I could not find it in the five year, um, which is um, account number 1000. One one zero dash one three one dash zero zero zero. That's an account moving over to account one zero 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 one one zero dash one nine zero dash zero zero one. I could not find that. Are you talking about the second account? Yes, please. Yes, I couldn't find it under the five year. Yeah, the second account number one nine zero dash zero zero one. Didn't we talk about this before that you just didn't put it in the five year? It's a sub account. No, she didn't. I'm sorry, Julie, what'd you I'm say? Sorry. Okay, so it's a sub account of the 1,110, 190, and then four zeros. There's a sub account there that's not showing. Yes, I noticed that. Um, and that, those sub accounts are just more detailed of the parent account that you're seeing. Okay. So. Well, I, I, I would, um, I'm not in favor of um, passing a permanent appropriation for fiscal 2024 as presented. Why? I just said why. I'm just not in favor for it. The number is there. And so I'm just not in favor for it. Well, we need a budget. Yeah, we do. First of the year. We'll be back in here on January 2nd. Well, we can't. We can just modify this line to add the one at the end if you'd like. There's top line accounts and then child accounts underneath it. I mean, you've had this for how long? Why wasn't this brought up before? Or Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I was looking at the figures. I mean, this is a budget that I'm not even going to be here for, so I don't feel right approving any of it because for that reason, that's. Well, but you're approving everything else. You're hiring people that are going to be here. Why didn't you put that off? We, we have a duty to do this, and we have to go into the new year with the budget. We can't. Uh, insurance is going to be coming out 1-1. Uh, one, one. We're not going to have a budget, so we're going to go into again appropriate funds without appropriations approved. We can't do that. And there's no reason why we don't approve. Uh, budgets can be amended at any time, and typically throughout a year, they, they are. Uh, exactly. And every expenditure, every budgeted item has to be approved. So this isn't saying, yes, it's going to be approved, or if Ms. McKee thinks that something else needs to increase or decrease, we can do that at the first of the year, but I believe we need to pass a budget. Um, most other entities do it in the beginning of December so that you have it for the first of the year because if we do it on the second, Julie's got a lot of work to get an input to be able to, to pay those things. It, it, it makes no sense not to pass the budget because it can be easily amended it can be easily passed too. The first meeting, right? You don't think it's going to pass the first meeting? But you already have appropriations that are coming out, and you can't appropriate much. Can't spend money without appropriations. So, but those come out one one. So we won't have a budget. So that's not they come out one one. They come out on New Year's Day. Yeah, the for the they. Second, but in the more, right? But it won't be approved. It hasn't been to the auditor. It's approved. It's been determined that there's not supposed to be any appropriations until it's approved by the auditor. So we need it approved to send it. 
So you need temporary pipe, is what you're saying. But I mean, I, that's, that's what you're saying. But I don't. I've never approved the budget. I don't think it's the first part of the year. I mean, until the first of the year. The, the, so the, 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 the auditor. No, the prosecutor. You, you want a budget before you get into that year because we're going to have to approve it. Every other entity does it, not just it, it's sound fiscal. Did we do it last year? No, okay, but it was, did we do it the year but there was a problem because we had expenditures did we do it without authorization. I think you did do it in 2020. We did temporary one, but you did temporary one in 2020, the first meeting in 2022. I think that's when we did it. I mean, what do you think the difference that's going to happen if you do a permanent appropriations now versus the second? <coughs> Doing it now gives Julie time to get it in the UAN, to get it to the auditor for approval to... Why are we delaying for delay six? It makes no sense. And there, was, there was questions before about an $80,000 input, and that was asked by the administrator. It wasn't the first call, Ms. Varian. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Johnson. No. Ms. Mickey. No. I move to transfer funds as presented. OK, here we have this transfer of funds. Can um, I get a second, please? We can go into discussion. Okay. okay, let's go into discussion. Transfer funds from. I just. Well, no, we're just, just, well she, she was trying to answer this is within this 190 001. That's just the salary. And the 001 is just the mm -hmm. indicator to me that it's the lowest salary. Okay. A sub account. It's a sub account that's at my discretion. To, those numbers don't mean anything to an auditor or anybody else other than me having it more detailed in the budget. Just a hierarchy of accounts. But why do we need that much money in there? Do we have money in there already? I, because we needed more money for the salary for the rest of the year. We didn't approve enough for that either mm -hmm. at the beginning. At or? the beginning, we didn't. She's gone. She's had more hours. She's been more full time than she has part time this year. So I just couldn't estimate enough for her salary. So she has one more paycheck that comes out of yes. this, right? Yes. And you have to cover one more paycheck. Yes. So why do we move five thousand? I had to, for both the paychecks in December, I wanted to make sure I had enough because she also got paid out for vacation. It's like, yeah, because I, I haven't seen, I was trying to see what was left up there in the book if you had put I'm this sorry. in. I didn't, I, was doing I didn't see what was in, I don't understand. I didn't see what was in the, what was left in the fund at all. Well, I need $5,000 now. Those are very common transfers. Oh, I, I understand that. I just, I just didn't see them. I, mean, I, I gave you the, the, the 400 last time for roads. I don't see where we're spending that extra. I'm not spending an extra. I was moving from the general fund to the road fund. There's no you extra. You had to cover it or something, right? But it's, but it's <laughs> some people on the end their salary sometimes just over the salary. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Some people amend their, sometimes amend their corporations every meeting. That I've oh, I'm rarely done that. it the entire time I've been here because I don't, it, it shouldn't be necessary. But if you want Laura to be paid the rest of the year, I need to be able to transfer these funds. There's also a transfer in there to make the Taylor Road payment, which is due January 1st. Where does that go from? From, from principal payments bonds to uh, Taylor Road payments. That's a different thing. And just because there's a transfer, you could, if it's not 5000 it could be 50000 It's not expending that amount. It's just putting it, allocating it to that account. And next year, when there's need, there wouldn't be as much put in there. This thought that just because it's in the account it's spent is... It's staying in the general account, correct? Yep. Yes. That's why it's only a motion. It's just a motion. Not okay. And I had, I had the full salary for me oh. appropriated. That's where it's coming from because I had the full 130 appropriated for Nita, but she didn't work a full year. So I could easily just move it over to Laura's yeah. salary and make sure that she didn't pay for the rest of the year. And the Taylor Road, this is the first payment on that, correct? Uh, yeah. It's the second payment. It's the second payment, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Did I have a second on that? Or was it just Jeff? I did. Second. Probably just, yes. yeah. Because mm -hmm. okay. I. But it's just, and this funds is just to pay more for her vacation? No. It's to pay her salary. Her salary? Sure it's $5,000, just Laura? No, it's just to make sure I have a little bit of a cushion in order to get Laura's salary and benefits paid for the rest of the year. It's so let's just, approve, let's just approve $1,000, that should cover no. it. I, at the time when I did it, I needed mm -hmm. $1,000. That should cover no. it. No, <laughs> no. Okay. I think we should listen to our fiscal officers doing these books. Mm -hmm. She knows what needs to be mm -hmm. paid. And if, yeah. if you put 200000 in there, mm -hmm. it makes no difference because no expenditure is mm -hmm. going to be made except one that is approved by the board. She's right. saying she needs $5,000 to have the cushion in that account okay. to do it. Now, you just approved two more hours of holiday pay for it. So that's increasing. I mean, I did increase it. But you do, Mark. You're always honest about not doing things proper procedure. So I don't, and not without our knowledge. I don't know how much is in those funds. I haven't seen anything for. And I understand we've been asked about a book in there that we are yeah. not getting our updates. Yeah. So we Did, should, last we, five months are not in there. We, we had the opportunity to have direct read-only access to you, the UAN system, to get anything. You guys didn't approve it. That's nothing to do with it. Mr. We had the opportunity. It. Has nothing to do with it. Both you guys voted no. That has nothing to do with it. It has everything has to do with it. If to you do want to know what's in there, so how do you know how much is in the fund, Mark? How do you know how much is in there? Do you know how much is in that fund? The, Are you it just doesn't, trusting her that I, I'm, tr I'm, I'm trusting her because even if, even if there's $100,000 in there and she wants to put another 5000 it's not material because there's no funds being expended. It's just shuffling it around. It's still there. It could be, it could be shuffled out, could be left in there. It, 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 it has zero effect except for her, her bookkeeping and her accounting of it. Roll call, Ms. Varian? Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? I won't be able to pay Laura. The last page, I you say no. Okay, you did it last time. I'm just so saying. You can't, you can't, I'm just you saying. Can't, you can't, fear, but, you know, you did that last time. We took the signatures away. You did the same thing. No, I just yeah, am telling you, you that you I cannot yes, do more did. if you yes, don't do the transfer. Mm -hmm. Or the loan agreement. Yeah. Or the first, let's do the first. And, and that's for a loan that we had no idea we had. Six hundred thousand dollars because there's no tra certificate of transition. And we're just talking about the um, just the one thing um, we're voting on. Um, Your vote would be for all three. All three. Items. Okay. We're in the middle of a vote. Yeah, but I want. She's questioning I'm it. questioning it, and I want to amend it. Items. So I'm not going to do all three items. Well, we're in the middle of a vote. You can't amend in the middle of a vote. Well, let, I'll take my vote back. You haven't voted. You haven't even voted. Mr. Johnson. Can't make this stuff up. I, I want Laura to get paid, so I, I don't want the road pavement to get paid, so, but if it was up to me, I wouldn't want to all stuff anymore, so I'll vote yes, so those two things can happen. Ms. McKee? No. For discussion purposes, I'll list it to the file and we'll yep. do off of the sheet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. I move resolution 23121903, excuse me, to approve the purchase orders as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion, please. They all seem in order to me. So. Mm -hmm. Got the right here. A roll call, Ms. Varian? Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. I move to ratify the payment of the bills as shown on the payment listing. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Roll call. 
discussion, I'm sorry. Roll call, please. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes, please. Thank you. Announcements of trustees and comments. The only thing I'd like to say is uh, uh, wind waste and trash pickup uh, due to the holidays, the week of the 25th. And I think January 1st, uh, the trash is going to be delayed a day. So instead of Tuesday, it's Wednesday. Uh, then I did have a question for the board. This wasn't brought up in anything. Uh, wind waste, the contract is expiring in March. Has anything been done with that? Any communications with them on that matter? Ms. Hanson? I have not had any communications with Wind Waste or, well, I've had other, Wind Waste and other trash companies have approached us. I, it's calendar to begin discussions in January about the pleasure of the board in terms of putting the contract out for bid. So we're not taking advantage of the contract provision which uh, allows the possible extension of the contract for up to 10% increase? Yep, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's on the calendar for January for the board to discuss their pleasure but that's, about how they want to proceed. Okay, but that's after the contract requires 90 days prior to expiration, which is January 1st, that they be notified if we want to do that. We're not going to have a board meeting until January 2nd, so that's after that date. No. Now, a 10% increase may seem like a lot, but reviewing what other trash uh, companies have been bidding in the surrounding entities, their bid prices are much higher. So I would have hoped we would have reached out to Wind Waste and said, we, we would like to elect this provision, then it's up to them to do it. But to do so, we have to do it by January 1st. We're not gonna be here. My question is, why hasn't it been done? Again, I'm, I'll speak up. Mr. Evans, this is a board. You can work with your board. If you would communicate with your board instead of fighting against us, your administrator, work with your administrator. Stop fighting, stop the gotcha moments. That's where you fail. You don't know how to sit and be a trustee. You want to fight, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Why don't you just, why don't you talk to us? Have a conversation with us. Bring up the information. Not the gotcha moment that we, you have to put out there and think that we are not, we, we don't, we don't we, care about what goes on we, in this we, we have. We do. A, a Come in and talk that is to not us. Communicated. But you're fight. That's all you want to do is fight. And not you don't want to work with anybody. Doing due diligence. And again, this is going to cost our township residents money. And this should have been. There was a meeting. I didn't. I didn't even know what it was about on Monday. All we see is wind waste. Sarah, two to four. I, I one would have hoped. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. There was no meeting on Monday. See, there's a gotcha moment again. Okay. That's, what he, just don't know what you're talking That's about. what he does. That's what he does. It was on. I think you had asked me about it on an email, and I responded back to you that said, I don't know what you're talking about. There guys. was no meeting. You got to stop the gotcha. It, 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 it was on the calendar. Unprofessional. Never have been. I can send you the screenshot. But that's the kind of things that, and we, we don't have a working calendar that I've asked for numerous times Mr. that there is we're missing these calendar. provisions. There are deadlines on the calendar. If you would ever just pick up the phone he doesn't and want speak to, to me so that us. we can have communication is that is fight. not asynchronous, I think that it would be helpful to resolving questions that no, you may I, have. Number, number one, with all the false allegations made, it needs to be an email. I've asked if we had a master calendar, and you stated it's updated on, on there. That is not a master calendar. So again, between now and the first, when waste needs to be contacted, do I have to do that? Because Evans, this is costing our residents money. There are dates on the master that are not on the master calendar. There are reminders to renew the wind waste contract. There are reminders to renew to renew calendar. the sheriff. Excuse me, Mr. Evans. There is reminders to renew the sheriff contract. There is reminders about board appointments. All of those are on the master calendar. What Mr. Evans so is to your doing is. Provision. 
Mr. Evans, what you're doing is you're trying to embarrass this board. You're trying to embarrass our t trust, our, our administrator. You have no, to I'm stop to that. No, right you're not. Talk. No, you're not. Well, I, What's right is pick up the phone and have a conversation I want instead to of fighting. Jeff, uh, his dedication to his Thank you. I think the fighting needs to stop. And I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah. And, well, I'm and, I, and I want to. Uh, what did you say, Mr. Uh, well, Johnson. Don't I have a few minutes to okay. yeah. 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 You got Six or whatever for an argument. I'm yeah. going to yeah. say yeah. thank yeah. you yeah. to all the citizens that have supported me or had a different opinion with me, but I really appreciate and humbled by the chance to serve the community here. You did a fabulous uh, job. I want to congratulate yeah. Mr. Burkholder and hope that you will do a great job for the township up here when you're sitting in this chair. Yes. Thank you. Please do. Thank and you. With that motion, do you have anything else? I, I don't. I, don't I, I just want to tell everybody to um, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, blessings to everyone and their family, and enjoy your family. It's really important. I want to make the final adjournment. Thank Move you. To adjourn. <laughs> yeah. One second. Right. We'll call Ms. Marion. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKee. Yes. Yeah. It is